Good morning, everybody, and what a wonderful morning it is. Uh, the, today is, I'm going to try to get through this the best I can. We have a lot to talk to you about today. Um, a lot of special things, uh, and, and today's schedule, if you uh, haven't gotten the gist of that, for those of you who are keeping track of our schedule, is a very intense schedule. Um, boy, I tell you, it, it seems like this show is uh, growing organically and I, I don't know how to explain it otherwise uh, yesterday was quite a long day for me got up at three o'clock in the morning and uh, started producing the morning show and didn't really get to sleep till about 10 <laughs> so it's all good though it, it was a great day uh, a lot of great things happened and a lot of good things we have planned for today um, the, what I'm about to tell you about, first of all, is something special happened, uh, the other day and, um, uh, to someone that means a whole lot to us. In fact, so much so that we've kind of adopted this person as our granddaughter and, uh, yeah, her parents are like, what, what, what? <laughs> well, we can't be her parents. That's for sure. We're way too old, but, um, I'm going to share with you, uh, some things that happened the other day that, uh, really kind of special. Um, to a special person, uh, someone that who has at a very young age, a very young lady, very gifted and a very, very kind-hearted young lady, uh, stepped forward to create a smile bag for uh, kids of her own age or older that are going through difficult times. And these are kids either that are um, in, in a foster situation or have been taken away from their parents because of a abusive relationship or they're in the hospital. A variety of reasons. I think you can guess them all. And um, so this young lady, um, Addison Brown, uh, really, gosh, is one of our heroes. We've got many, uh, and I think you guys know who our two top heroes are, and they happen to be preteens. <laughs> so, but um, yeah, but we want to highlight Addison today because she is a very special person, and um, boy, she's she's gotten a lot of recognition for what she's done in creating these smile bags. And what she does is she gets together with her friends, the community members who donate items and. And these smile bags contain things like whiteboard, a little whiteboard for them to sketch notes out on, uh, thoughts on, a little um, notebook that can be used as a journal, um, you know, a book. That, and a lot of these are meant to keep uh, their mind off of things that are going on at that time. Very, very thoughtful. Well, Addison has received a lot of recognition for this, and um, you know she has worked with police departments all around the region and is uh, continually trying to get these smile bags out. And you know, of course, she's been held up a little bit, like everything. Uh, the Corona nineteen uh, coronavirus has kind of held things up as far as her getting bags out. But nonetheless, there's police departments that stop by to pick up the bags and and uh, and deliver them to kids in need. Um, most recently, the Hammond Police Department has first uh, took, picked up their first bags uh, from Addison. And um, so um, you can go on Addison's uh, Facebook page called Miles of Many Smiles. And uh, boy, th that name says it all. She creates many miles of smiles. And so, um, yeah, she has been well noted on our show uh, repeatedly. In fact, Kelly sometimes says we talk about her too much. But no, you cannot talk about someone who uh, does this much work, good work for uh, the community too much. So um, there you have it. I'm going to show you something uh, that for us got kind of emotional when her parents sent us this video. Uh, so some people have stepped up to kind of help celebrate Addison's birthday. And I'm going to share that video with you now. And uh, again, I always have to apologize because, um, okay, here we go. This is Addison's birthday. Addison! Addison, come out front. Addison, come here. Addison, come here. Yeah. <laughs> 
Now, of course, as you know, and, and uh, police departments have been doing this. They've been going and celebrating um, birthdays of various different people in the neighborhood. And, and uh, they've been doing a quite a good job at that. But did you notice the amount of departments represented? Amazing. And I think and this is where I'm going to have to apologize because train wrecks happen this early in the morning. And uh, so I'm going to try to uh, put a graphic up here that uh, kind of, Okay, let me see here. Is this it? But we are going to make that it. Hold on just a second. Bear with us. Um, yeah, I've got to apologize to all of you uh, again. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Would like to recognize the following departments on our show this morning. Uh, Cherville Police Department, Highland Police Department, Cedar Lake Police Department, Lowell, Indiana State Police uh, Outpost, a Lowell Police Department, Lowell Fire Department, and Hammond Police Department. Uh, thank you all for making it. Yeah, it's Brown's birthday. so very special. We uh, appreciate that. And I, I can't tell you how much uh, we were touched when we saw that. We wish we could have been there. Um, but boy, I, I tell you, it's um, uh, hats off to all the departments for making this very special young lady's birthday very special. Addison, if you're out there, you know we love you. We wish we could be there and happy belated birthday. Um, but I can't tell you what, what uh, it's kind of refreshing to know that there's a young person out there that really cares about her peers and cares about what's going on in the community. Um, and so that was very nice of all the police departments. And these police departments are the ones that uh, she has worked with get these smile bags out to kids that are going through troubled times. So, uh, and I apologize for the, <laughs> the, the early morning confusion on the graphics. But again, we would like to thank all you uh, police officers, fire departments that, that uh, created this parade. And, and again, this happens in other communities, but it's usually that local fire department. But um, whoever coordinated this, I think it was the uh, state police that got all these... Uh, uh, departments together that uh, you know have, have actually participated in um, Addison's project uh, so very well done very well thought of uh, it's you guys are our heroes and Addison you know you're our hero so <laughs> that goes without saying so we got a lot of things to get through today uh, today's going to be a very very interesting day as far as schedule wise for us so let's get after it shall we um, so, uh, first of all, 
uh, wanted to talk to you about a uh, interesting show that we had last night. As you know, uh, Michael Puente has reached out to us and asked us to help produce a show that he does nightly called the N- uh, Northwest Indiana COVID-19 Update. Um, and uh, with us last night it was uh, uh, Michael Gonzalez, who is the, uh, the assistant to Jerome Prince, the mayor of Gary. And so he came on and, and kind of talked about what was happening as far as testing and uh, the possible rollout of field hospitals in Gary. And uh, so we want to thank him for coming on and joining the show and contributing to that conversation. Um, again, that, that's up on our Facebook page if you want to watch it, or it's on Michael's Facebook page and as well as Michael Gonzalez's Facebook page as well. So a couple of viewing areas got into a lot of discussions about the uh, stay-at-home order and, and specifically the test. You know, are, are tests being delivered fairly across the state, uh, particularly in the District 1 region. And so there was some discussions about that. Uh, please view it. Uh, and um, then, of course, we got, uh, we, we wanted to tell you about what's coming up today. Uh, Dina uh, Carolyn, uh, who is a very well noted speaker um, and very interesting career and interesting life path. Uh, she has gone through seven catastrophic events in her life and has overcome all of them to become this amazing speaker uh, and an actually noted uh, attorney. She has practiced law in several uh, notable cities. She was the uh, deputy um, lawyer for the city of Los Angeles, which is, and, and uh, there's been some very well-noted attorneys who have served in those positions, either the attorney for LA or deputy attorneys. Um, and so she has an amazing career. I think she's served in like three uh, different uh, major city offices uh, throughout the United States and uh, now has uh, come to to talk about some of the obstacles she's overcome in her life and, and some pretty catastrophic events. Uh, but you'll hear more about that at the show. This is an amazing lady. She's been on The Ellen Show um, and, and several other major network shows. Uh, and so uh, we would like you to tune in around 11 and uh, she will talk to us about uh, her life. And this is really, we invited her on to talk about one of the seven catastrophic events in her life. Because as you well know, this is um, the, uh, we are in the month of um, Sexual Aggression Awareness Month. So that's why we invited her on to talk about that specific incident, although we are going to go through other parts of her life and, and how that developed in, to make her the amazing speaker and uh, advocate that she is. So tune in for that. After that, we have another show coming up that happens every Wednesday at noon, uh, Connections Restored with Amy, Amy Boswinkle. Amy is going to have a special guest on today, and uh, so please tune in for that. This has been a very, very uh, well viewed show and uh, very noted. Uh, we've received a lot of compliments that this couldn't have happened at a better time. And the whole premise of this show is to help you with any stress that you're going through. And my goodness, I mean, I think we all are going through stress with this, this um, what's happening in our society today. I, I, I've never seen anything like this. So a lot of people are justifiably stressed out and it shows it shows that news is flooded with uh, uh bad news and um you know and 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 so this is a way of us providing hope for you and maybe some exercises that amy can share with you to kind of overcome some of that anxiety uh and depression or whatever you're going through uh so uh tune in for that at noon and then uh, following that some um uh some ladies from the Small Town Coffee are going to stop by, the two owners, and uh, so please tune in for that. Now, they, they are a local coffee roaster, and uh, but they do some amazing outreach for the community. They've worked with the Highland Community Foundation. They actually created a coffee that they sell, and the, the, uh, market, the, the proceeds that they earn from that coffee go directly to the Highland uh, Community Foundation. They've 
done some work recently with the District 1 Emergency Operations Center, providing them some meals and coffee. Um, so please tune in for that. Uh, you'll find that uh, they're, they're, the whole concept of their company is to make sure it is supportive of the community, just not here locally, but where they buy their coffee. And you'll hear the uh, story from Annette and Elizabeth that when they come on, uh, two amazing ladies and entrepreneurs uh, uh, that uh, I think you'll appreciate once you uh, hear their story. And uh, then uh, later on tonight, coming up at 7 p.m. this evening, Planting Possibilities TV. This is going to be the debut of Planting Possibilities TV. Marianne and uh, Mark Niner are going to come on and uh, talk about their organization, uh, mainly to highlight a fundraiser that they have coming up. And again, I can't say this enough, a lot of these organizations have really been put at a disadvantage because their fundraisers have had to be canceled. The, the social events that they usually sell tickets to, obviously with social distancing, they, they've had to go away. So they've been heavily impacted. And of course, you know, a lot of people don't have a lot of money to give them now uh, because they're waiting on checks, either loans uh, for, from the Small Business Administration or, uh, you know, some are just now getting their checks, their stimulus checks. Uh, so, uh, you know, they, they've been heavily, but they are going to be promoting one fundraiser that uh, they do annually, and that's their plant sale. So they'll be talking about that tonight at 7. Then, uh, well, oh, there's an Addison again. <laughs> yeah, I do want to say Addison has had remarkable amount of exposure. She's been on CNN um, yeah, she's, she's one of our favorite people I, that got mixed in and actually, and, uh, and again, here, we would like to thank the departments that took part in that. Um, and, uh, so, uh, coming up in a schedule that we've got, and I do want to make note of the, the other things that are going on. Uh, there's a mobile market that's taking place today at the Jubilee Worship Center in Hobart. Uh, and this is the, uh, put on by the food bank. Uh, for those who are out there struggling and looking for where your next meal is going to be coming from, uh, get on out to Hobart. That starts at 4 p.m. They're asking people not to arrive before 3 just to, to so that things don't get too crowded. And again, uh, everyone understands, including the food bank, that there's quite a few more people out there that you are know, lacking a paycheck now and they're waiting for benefits to show up. They've maybe applied for food stamps, waiting for that application to be processed. In the meantime, they need food. Um, and, and that's given with the economic situation today. So please know that, that, uh, that, that there is an opportunity for you to pick up some uh, meals for your family to get you through the tough times. And, um, and you know, there's no shame in this. We all going through this, uh, uh quite a few people that, you know, this has affected people that were living comfortable lives and all of a sudden, boom, they no longer have a paycheck. Uh, they may no longer have a future job to go back to. So give that some consideration. Um, also, one thing we also want to highlight is the uh, St. Jude has a fundraiser coming up this Friday, and it is called the uh, Stand Up for St. Jude. Um, and uh, this is a online event uh, that they're put, they're going to be streaming live, a variety of comedians. And I think I heard about a magic act that they may be having as well. So uh, put that on your calendar and uh, make sure also, also if you have the means, uh, please contribute to St. Jude, um, an amazing organization. And um, I believe we've gone through the schedule. I want to go over our concert series uh, that's coming up. And uh, tonight we have Ryan Staczynski, who's going to be coming on shortly after the Planting Possibilities TV. And he is going to be putting on a live streaming concert on the Bill and Kelly show, benefiting Lakeshore Paws. Lakeshore Paws is a uh, dog adoption agency located in Valparaiso. They do an amazing job in screening these uh, fur babies before they're adopted out and plus uh, you get a package you they just don't hand over a dog and expect you to 
um, go from there because everyone knows bringing adopting a fur baby it has a lot of expense. You've got veterinary uh, expenses and so on. Well, the nice thing about Lakeshore Plaza, what they try to do is package that for you. So included in the adoption fees um, is uh, quite often the first vet visit, the shots, the first year's shots. And uh, I believe at one time they used to offer some like an introductory training uh, session that you can have. So uh, it's an amazing organization and they, they uh, really uh, do a good job of finding the fur babies that need to have forever homes and getting them uh, put in the places of loving families. So tune in for that. Great. And um, Ryan is an amazing musician. Uh, he is, I mean, he's in the running of receiving uh, most views and, and, um, and so, uh, yeah, we're going to be talking about that later. We're going to, I think, have uh, a runoff with our, uh, our musicians that came on that had the highest views and bringing them back maybe for a concert if we can get them back. Um, then come Friday at 8 p.m., uh, Sammy, live from Miami, um, and is going to be doing a benefit concert for the Cancer Resource Center uh, of Northwest Indiana. They're located in Munster, and for those who are familiar with them or not familiar with them, they provide an amazing amount of resources for people who are either going through chemotherapy, who have, re who have survived cancer, various stages. They, they have cooking classes, yoga classes, and an amazing garden that people can just go sit and reflect in. So uh, that is a very worthwhile charity. Uh, we've done a lot of event promotions for them. The wind down event that they do every year. Um, and uh, just an amazing facility. And as every facility, they do need help right now. So um, you know, please tune in for that. Just add it on uh, to our event series is Dan Risen is going to be coming back. Uh, he's going to be playing uh, Monday evening, and um, so he is going to be playing uh, for, again, St. Jude House. Uh, we've done a couple of events for them, and uh, so when he was looking around for a charity, and we ask all of our musicians either to pick a charity or uh, we'll we'll take one out of the rotation. And uh, Dan, um, through research, decided he wanted to do St. Jude House, so... And they need help. Uh, what better time to do that? And so, uh, so tune in. That's next Monday. And um, that is it as far as our schedule. I, I told you we are going to be busy today, uh, today, the rest of the week. And next week looks like we're going to be just as busy. So, uh, yeah, please keep tuning in. And we can't say how much we appreciate your support. Uh, if you like what you see, please share it on your Facebook page or a group that you think can appreciate our show. Uh, we do uh, sharing to some strategic groups throughout the Northwest Indiana, Michigan, uh, Wisconsin area, uh, and people have asked us to share to their groups, and we repeatedly do that. Um, but, you know, again, if you think you know people can benefit, please share uh, we would appreciate it, and I know our sponsors would appreciate it, and um, the people, most importantly, the people that come on our show, which a lot of times may be a charity, it may be an author, it may be someone doing something of note, uh, like an Addison Brown. <laughs> we want to have Addison back on, um, and uh, you know, and and many other people, and uh, you can help them by sharing the show. We don't do it to get us our exposure. It's they really deserve to pub, have publicized what they're doing for the community for various not draw attention to themselves because they never very in fact quite a few of them don't like that exposure but they would like to know people what they're doing to help maybe contribute uh, provide help and just uh, awareness um, of what's happening out in the community the reason why we have them on is to provide hope I. Uh, you know, every time we have someone on like Addison, boy, it, it just gives you a feeling of hope that things are looking up for the future, if you will. And, uh, you know, when you have a 12-year-old that is thinking about her peers and making sure that uh, she gets things out that, that helps them out, uh, when you have a 13- um, or 14-year-old, I forgot what he is, but Ryan, who uh, developed the backpack project for uh, homeless of Chicago, 
And uh, yes, a 13 to 14 year old, and he thought of this back when he was nine, uh, developing a backpack program where he puts all sorts of life essentials into a backpack and delivers them to people that are out on the streets in Chicago and is a huge advocate for the homeless in Chicago. Oh my goodness. I mean, he is, he's just not providing a service. He is a huge advocate when uh, the the, uh, COVID-19 stay at home order took an effect. His first thought is if they're not going to allow these people to go into a uh, shelter, what are they going to do? And so he kind of stepped things up and made sure that he couldn't go out because of social distancing. And, and of course, he shouldn't be going out. Um, but, you know, some departments stepped up and helped him, came by his home and picked up some backpacks and, and delivered them. So that's yet another great hero of ours. So with that, uh, what I'm going to do is leave you with a couple of things. One, I am going to drive in to you all that if you do have to go out, like Kelly and myself, we're moving, and so we have to periodically go to stores, get the house, new house ready. But we're taking extreme precaution when we do that. And so I want to urge all of you, if you do have to go out to the grocery store or to uh, a um, service center or to one of the essential services out there please please wear a mask and if you have uh, protective gloves wear protective gloves and uh, always wash your hands never forget that 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 comes to think or remind you of what your mom always used to my mom every time I sat down at the table uh, after playing 24 7 baseball I'd sit down and first thing she would ask Billy do you wash your hands yeah, mom. Did you? She look at my fingernails, and I'd always end up going and washing my hands. Well, her words come back to haunt me today. <laughs> so, um, but I want to share with you the video that we have been sharing. We've tried doing CDC, but someone out there doesn't like that video. And we're going to be sharing some other people's videos as well. Someone just sent me their video. We're going to try to get that into the loop. But one of the ones that uh, I think everyone found most comical. Uh, alrighty, alrighty, alrighty. Where is my fa- Oh, here we go. I'm Bounty Hunter Bobby Bandito, but you can call me Bobby B. I see a tight time we catch this killer, because we got more living to do. Here's how. So you lay down your favorite bandana, unfold it like so. Get your trusty coffee filter that you had on the go. Get your two rubber bands. Roll one down one end like this. Roll the other one down this end like that. Fold them over like so. Grab a hold and you're good to go. Now remember, stay at home. But if you gotta go, strap it on like so. I'm challenging all you triple B's out there. It's time for us to band together and see who can make the most badass bandito bandana so we can beat the Corona V. Bobby B style. <laughs> I always get a kick out of that. Ah, Matthew McConaughey. Hey. Alrighty, alrighty, alrighty. Uh, boy. So, uh, yeah, we uh, we appreciate that video. And plus, no one's complained about it, like the CDC. I don't know why someone out there complains about the CDC. And there are people out there that says, oh, no, you should have sewn masks. And we actually have sewn masks that someone made for us. Uh, a couple of people, uh, actually. Ryan's sister made us some of these that we use. Um, actually, they're two-sided. One side with cows and the other side with the uh, checker pattern. And then, of course, oh, I don't have it here. Then, how? yeah, oh, then, of course, the most famous sought after, like our coffee mugs, remember those? Uh, the Bill and Kelly show face mask. Yeah, got that, baby. Yeah, yeah. Um, and remember, wash them daily. CDC is recommending that you wash them daily. So whether it's a sewn mask, whether it is a bandana that you make and use the rubber bands to strap it on, uh, whether it's a piece of a t-shirt or a um, towel, uh, 
it's got to be something. You need to have something if you're going to be in an area where there are other people. Um, you know, I've shown that, you know, I've shown an extensive video. You go back and explain, and it explains why you should be wearing a mask. And we're still, you know, some areas, I think, quite honestly, my opinion is that we're going to be asked to wear them any time that we go out. Uh, with the exception of a couple instances, like if we go out to do a run, an exercise, where it should, you know, it's difficult to do that. I tried with the mask on, and you know, and that's when you run. Uh, you, you typically there's no one with you, and if they are, they're either your mate or something that, um, yeah. So, yeah, I think the exception is when you are going to be alone running or something like that. But I think we're going to have that day where we're going to be called to do that. And, you know, we go out and we find that people are doing it. We have masks and gloves on. Um, then we go into areas where we're the exception. We're the only people that have masks on. So, and that shouldn't be. When you're in a crowded area, when you are um, going in to pick an essential item up, you need to practice social distancing, which should, in, you know, include just not distancing, but protecting yourself and others with a face mask. Um, I'm going to end up the show today. Uh, oh my goodness. I do need to do that. We got a lot going on. I need to get moving on. So I would like to, uh, do one other thing. And you guys have seen this before. Uh, Kelly and I would like to thank all the nurses, the doctors, and the, um, first responders out there who put their lives on the line daily, every day, and specifically the medical folk that, um, you know, that are short on supplies, face masks, gowns, uh, essential things that they need to protect themselves and the people they come in contact with. I mean, these are people that are putting hands on people that are uh, infected or have come down with the uh, COVID-19 virus. And so they are exposing themselves unbelievably to, uh, I mean, they're immersed in an environment. And everyone has said, all the uh, noted physicians who have talked about this, PhDs from medical schools have said, these people not only will ha expose themselves and have a greater um, chance of getting uh, coming down and being infected, but it, the ch because they're immersed, the chances are, if they do become infected, it is going to be much worse of a situation uh, than if we just have incidental contact. So for that reason, um, we wanted to say thank you to all those folks who are putting their lives on the line on a daily basis, all the support people behind them who go behind them and, and try to help out in any way they can, uh, and the list could go on and on and on. But if you're in that group, thank you, and I'm going to close out the show uh, with our thanks. On behalf, On behalf of the, of the Bill and Callie, Callie Show, we would like, like to say two, two simple, simple words to all of those in the medical, medical profession and those first responders, responders and anyone else, else who is taking such a risk, risk to make sure, sure that we all stay safe. safe. Thank, Thank you. you. This episode of The Bill and Callie Show is brought to you by Sip Coffee House 2 in Highland, Indiana on Jewett Avenue. Great coffee, lattes, smoothies, and more. Food and treats you will adore. Small town charm with big city selection. It's Sip Coffee House 2. If it's breakfast, brunch, or lunch you need, Les Cafe is the place to go, indeed. Open 6 a.m. to 4 p.m. seven days a week. Les Cafe Pancake House, located in Highland, Indiana on Highway Avenue. Les Cafe, where less is more. 
promise you Art House, a fun and vibrant place for local artisans to display and sell their creative works, owned and operated by artists for artists. Conveniently located at 8830 Kennedy Avenue in Highland, Indiana. For hours and events, visit pyarthouse.com or follow them on Facebook. Promise you Art House, where creativity reigns.